This is Valerie DeLeon, and in this video, I'll describe ways to transform your image data to fit orthogonal planes in 3D Slicer. Or as we say in the lab, hey, my data look crooked. When we're working with a complicated structure like the skull, it can be hard to stay oriented in the 2D sections when they cut at a weird angle through the anatomy. In this video, we'll talk about two different ways to reorient the skull into orthogonal planes before you collect landmarks or segment structures in the skull. First, I'll show you the simple method. This is good when you will only be working with the data in 3D Slicer, so I think of it as an internal transformation of the data. Let's start by loading our image data. Select the load DICOM icon in the upper left, and this will pull up our DICOM directory, where I've already imported a micro CT of a mouse skull. Let's select that volume and then select the load command. Next, we'll take a moment to set up our workspace. If you want, you can skip ahead to this time point to get straight to the first transform method, or to this time point to get to the second transform method. We're starting with the default settings here. First, I like to rename the data object that I'm working with here in the data module. We only have one image volume for this mouse, so we can use the specimen number to name the data object. Right click on the object and select rename. This is, for me, specimen number 1901M. Next, I always prefer to work with a dark background in the viewer. In the upper left of each viewer window, there is a push pin icon that opens a menu of viewing options. If you click on the eye icon, this will allow you to choose a black background. The bottom three images in this view are 2D slices through the volume. The images are super high contrast and it's hard to pick out some details. We want to adjust the grayscale values using this tool in the top menu. This grayscale tool acts as a dragger when you click in one of the views. Up and down movements adjust the brightness and side to side movements adjust the amount of contrast. Our goal is to be able to see the thin bone inside the skull. Click the white arrow back in the top menu to release the grayscale tool. You can also control the view in each one of the images. The space bar, right click and drag, lets you zoom in and out. Shift, left click and drag lets you pan the image or move it around in the window. I always prefer to use the viewer control menu behind the push pin icon to switch the 3D viewer from perspective view to orthogonal view. The last step to set up our workspace is to create a volume render to visualize the bone of the skull. I do this last because it sucks up a lot of memory. Use the volume render module, select the data object that you want to visualize, confirm that the GPU ray casting is activated, and then under the advanced menu, click the histogram icon and enter the threshold value that represents the density of bone. So for this particular scan, which used Hounsfield units, that was about 300. I'll link another video below that will go into more detail on volume rendering, including changing the color of the model. Finally, at the top of the window, toggle the eye icon to make the rendered volume visible. It's kind of hard to see here, but the skull of the mouse is this tiny speck here. So I have to zoom in close to see it. And I'm going to adjust the 2D windows to zoom out and see more of the skull. We're going to be transforming the skull to change the orientation of these 2D slices. So I'm going to change the viewer layout to enlarge just the 3D viewer so I can see the skull really well. Now this giant P in the background tells us that we're looking from what the computer expects to be the anterior direction towards the posterior direction. Notice that this mouse's head was scanned in a random orientation, but we're going to fix that. We'll use the transform tool to do it. Now go to the data module and find the data object for me, 1901M. The transform tool is indicated by this grid icon to the right of the data object. Right click on the icon and choose create a new transform. Click on it again and activate the interaction in 3D Viewer. When you click in the 3D Viewer, you'll know you're grabbing the image volume because the wall of the volume will turn yellow. Left click and drag to reorient the skull in this space. We're going to rotate the skull using the transform tool so that we're looking at an anterior view. And remember, you can use small circles to rotate the model in the opposite direction. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in the 3D viewer and shift, left click and drag lets you pan the image. We can check the view from a right lateral perspective by using the push pin icon to open the viewer menu and clicking on the R for right in orientation model. Shift, left click to pan the model 
and center it and left click on the model to adjust the transformation. We can do the same thing and click on the S to get a superior view of the skull. Notice the I in the background, which indicates that we're looking inferiorly from the superior view. I can left click on the model and adjust it. And so to tilt the model to the left, I'm going to wiggle the model in little circles to the right. And now we can return to a conventional layout for the viewers and confirm that our 2D slices more closely represent the orthogonal planes of the skull. I'm going to shift left click to pan, scroll wheel to move through the slices, or you can drag the handle at the top of the window to jump around. And here we're able to see that we have a pretty good mid-sagittal view of the skull. When you're 100% satisfied with your transformation, you have to take an additional step to apply the transformation to the data. Right click on the grid icon and select Harden Transform. Your transformation is represented as a transform object in the data module. It's actually just a matrix of numbers that includes information about the translation and rotation of the model. You'll need to be sure that you save the transform object separately for each specimen so that we can replicate your work. This image volume is now ready for a landmark collection using the markups module, and don't forget to save your data. This workflow is adequate for collecting landmarks as long as you've saved the transform object. But if you try to export this volume to use in another program, it's going to go back to looking crooked again. And this is because we have rotated the volume in space within 3D Slicer, but we haven't actually changed the voxel structure of the image. If you want to create a data object where the voxels are oriented to the orthogonal planes of the skull, you'll need to use a different workflow. I call this second method an external transformation because the voxel structure gets transformed and exists outside of 3D Slicer. The second workflow uses a similar approach to transforming the volume, but also has an added step of re-slicing the transformed data and changing the voxel structure so that the cubic voxels are aligned with the orthogonal planes of the skull. So first we'll set up the workspace. And let's start back at the default layout in 3D Slicer where I've loaded the same DICOM volume. And we'll quickly go through all the same steps to set up the workspace. I'll rename the image volume for the specimen and I'm adding Alt here to distinguish it from the first volume. I use the 3D viewer menu to change the background to black and switch from perspective view to orthogonal view. And then I'll use the grayscale tool to adjust the brightness and contrast in my 2D slice windows. Now we're going to be creating a new object here. And these image data can get really large and bog down our computers. So we want to do whatever we can to keep the file size as small as possible, while still maintaining the required quality of the image data. One way we do this is to convert that data to 8-bit format. It requires two steps. Use the magnifying glass icon to search for the Simple Filters module. Use the Filter pull-down menu here to find Rescale Intensity Image Filter. Set the minimum and maximum grayscale values to 0 and 255 respectively. Enter a new name for the output volume. Here I just appended the word Filtered. And then click Apply. We go back to the data module and you can see that this new object has been created. Now use the magnifying glass icon again to search for the cast scalar volume module. Choose the filtered 0 to 255 grayscale object we just made as our input and create a new output volume. Here I appended 8-bit to the name of the new output object. Under output type select unsigned character. This is an 8-bit data type. Then click apply. Return to the data module the 8-bit volume is the object that we're going to transform, but before we can do that, we want to make a copy that we're going to use as a template later. In the data module, right-click on the 8-bit object and select Clone. We'll just let that copy sit there until we need it later. Now visualize the 8-bit data using the Volume Render module. Make sure to set the volume as the new 8-bit data. Under the Advanced menu, click the histogram icon and set the minimum threshold for bone density. Now here, where we've changed the grayscale values, a threshold of 30 is going to be more appropriate. Toggle the eye on to show the volume rendering. And just like last time, it appears small in this window, so we'll have to zoom in. 
Now we'll transform the original 8-bit object just like we did in the first part of this video. Right click on the grid icon to the right of the object name and select Create New Transform. Right click on the grid icon again and activate Interaction in 3D Viewer. We'll rotate the skull to correspond to orthogonal planes, but won't really pay attention right now to the expected direction. So for example, we're not gonna worry that the ventral side of the mouse is facing the direction that the program labels as posterior. I'm making small circles to tilt the model in the opposite direction. And if you'd prefer to edit the transform properties directly, you can choose that option when you right click on the grid icon. At the bottom of the window are sliders. Avoid the translation sliders for now, but you might find the rotation sliders useful at this point. When you are satisfied with the transformation of the model, return to the data module. You can see that there is a transform object associated with the 8-bit object. This yellow highlight indicates that it's in use. Our next step is going to be to re-slice the transform model so that the voxels are aligned with the orthogonal planes of the skull. In the same step, we're going to crop out all the extra blank voxels that carry no information about the skull, but take up a lot of valuable file space. Notice here there's this annotation ROI object. ROI stands for Region of Interest. We're going to use the ROI because it tells us the boundaries of the original image volume. In effect, it's showing us the voxel structure of the original image. Click on the eye icon to the right of the annotation ROI object. And this shows us the boundaries of the ROI in all of the viewer windows. We're going to use this ROI to set the boundaries of our new transformed object. In the lower right viewer, you can see that the rostral edge of the ROI is cutting off the tip of the nose. You can click and drag the little handle to adjust that boundary. I have the viewer set to jump slices, so when I clicked in the frame there, it shifted the position of the other slices. Keep your eye on the lower right viewer. See how the dorsal edge of the ROI is far from the roof of the skull? This means that there's a whole lot of information in the volume that's not contributing to our reconstruction of the skull. We're going to remove those wasted voxels by sliding the ROI closer to the skull. I'm moving to the lower center viewer now and scrolling up to the widest part of the skull. I'm going to use the draggers to adjust the ROI to be closer to the skull on the right and the left sides. And now I'm going to combine this ROI with the copy of the 8-bit volume that we created earlier. And this is going to make a template that we're going to use when we re-slice our transformed object. To do this, I'm going to go to the magnifying glass icon and search for the crop volume module. For the input volume, I'll use the 8-bit copy object that I made back at the beginning of this workflow. And this was the original untransformed object. And I'll use the ROI that I just created as the input ROI. I'm going to leave 8-bit copy as the output volume. This means that the new template volume that I'm making here is going to replace and overwrite the 8-bit copy object. It's OK to leave all these default values and then click Apply. We're returned to the data module window here, and the 3D viewers are showing the template we made. Don't be concerned that parts of the skull are cut off. If we visualize our transformed 8-bit volume by clicking here, we can see that our template ROI fully captures the mouse skull. Our next step is to use this template to re-slice our transformed 8-bit image volume. Use the module finder to search for resample scalar vector DWI volume module. Set the input volume to be our 8-bit volume. For the output volume, create a new volume and give it a new name. Here I'm appending the word cropped. Our reference volume is going to be the template that we just made, and we have to tell the program to apply the transform. Remember, we did not harden the transform earlier in this particular workflow. You can usually keep all of the additional default settings, but be sure to click apply at the bottom. The resample module can take a long time to run, so be patient. Back in the data module window, you can see that the new volume has been created. Be sure to save your data. You can use the Save Data icon, which will open a window and give you the option to save all of the data objects. We don't really need to save everything, and each image volume can take up a whole lot of disk space. As long as we use good lab practice and we keep track of our workflow in our lab notebooks, we can recreate most of these objects. 
The important objects to save are the ones where you used your discretion. So we save the transform because you decide how to rotate the object. And we save the annotation because you decide where to put the limits on this particular object. And of course, our goal was to create the final transformed and cropped volume, so we're going to save that. As an alternative, you also have the option to export each individual object from the data module window. You can right click on the object and choose export. For the image data, the NRRD format is commonly used in 3D Slicer, and it can be imported into ImageJ and Mira, VG Studio Max, and all kinds of other common programs. The transform object is saved in H5 format, and the annotation ROI can be exported in CSV format. You can use the new volume now to collect landmarks or segment structures. But let's close this scene and look at our new image volume from scratch. You can see here that the skull is oriented orthogonal to the planes of the volume and the structures appear symmetric in the 2D windows. In addition, by converting these data 8-bit format and cropping away all the unnecessary voxels, I was able to reduce the file size of the volume from 247 megabytes to 81 megabytes. This makes it easier to work with this volume in standard computers. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful for your workflow. Please like and subscribe to the DeLeon Lab channel for more tutorials and videos showcasing our work.